So I'm going to come right out of the box. And the first question I just want to throw out, and I, nobody likes to be first, but somebody's always got to be first to start a conversation. The first thing I want to hear, and it's a pretty vague question, right? But here it is. What do you like about your neighborhood? What is it you like? Don't yell nothing, because clearly there is something because you're here. Okay, ma'am, please stand up. Tell us your name. I know it's just like being in school. Sorry, the camera goes down. You though, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Um, I like the fact that this is probably maybe my third time moving back down here. Okay. From the first time I moved down here to now, I like the fact that security has actually done a great job with the neighborhood. Okay. I didn't see a change. Not okay. A big change, but I see a change in it. Okay. So, st so don't suggest. So when you say security has done a good job, am I hearing you say? that what you like about your neighborhood is that you feel safe because of the security? Yeah, compared to? Compared to other places? No, compared to, Com compared to what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, did you leave initially because yeah. you didn't? Okay, you left for other reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so security, what was that young lady's name? Who just spoke? Me? Yes. Latoya. Latoya. Henderson. Henderson, thank you. You just say your name when you when you speak. They'll be great. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to share what they like about their community? I know there's got to be more. Yes, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Tell us your name. Um, my name is Nakia Brooks. I like that it's based off your income. Okay. And it does a big help. Okay. Could you repeat what you said? Based off your income. Based off of the income. So. And let me, um, let me tell you all, because I always like to be as transparent as possible. The only reason I want your name, okay, just so I'm clear, I want you to have ownership. When you stand up, I want you to own why you're standing up. This is your community. I don't live here. So when you stand up, the fact that you live here, I want you to feel good about, I live in Newtown 20. I live in Woodside Gardens. There's nothing wrong with that. You live here because the income allows you to live here. So be proud of that. So I want to hear what it is that you like about your community. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Sherry. Sherry. Okay. Um, I like, well, I've been living here for some years. Okay. Or whatever. But what I do see is, like, the, the tenants, and they interact with each other, and the children. Uh-huh. They play together and stuff like that. And also, like, it's kind of like a family type orientated thing or okay. whatever. Everybody knows each other. Um, I can walk outside my house at night, even though they do have crime here mm -hmm. sometimes or whatever. I don't feel like I'm not safe. Okay. Or I've, it's been occasion I've left the car door open. I'm sorry. And okay. Things like that, and I don't feel like a, I'm in an unsafe community. Okay. Even though the outside sometimes um, brings in like, trouble to the community or okay. whatever. But like she said, that the security, they seem like they're doing a pretty good job with keeping like the, um, the trafficking down. And okay. Stuff like that. Okay. So Sherry, mm -hmm. so I heard two things from you. I heard the first was mm -hmm. you like the fact that the community, mm -hmm. right, still had that old school back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know everybody. Mm -hmm. right. You know when a car breaks that corner, they don't belong here. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat, right. no matter what they're driving, you know they don't belong here. That's a feeling of sense of security, if you will. Then the private security helps that. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Tierra Smith. Tierra Smith. I like the fact that since we've had new um, property managers on the property that they're more for the kids now, they do a okay. lot more for the kids. Okay, so here comes the youth. That's what I'm... And now we're now we're now I feel I'm starting to feel like we're opening up because they're they're key, they're key. You can't do anything without them. So she likes the fact that management has allowed the youth to be more engaged, more involved. Okay. Anybody else? Come on, let's keep it going. Yes, sir. I like how the What's your name, Chandler? Kali. Kali. Okay. I like how the. Good. Like Mr. 
stretch for school. Okay, okay. So Mr. Curtis is helping to empower you. He's yeah. making you, he's giving you a sense of uh, hope. Mm -hmm. um, he's helping you with educational things, okay? Come on, let's keep it going. Some more young people, come on. There. I think my man here has something to say. Go ahead and say it. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Go ahead. Fine. Right. Hello. Um, I like that when you're doing something, you have to just keep it busy. Okay, so Mr. Curtis is keeping you busy. Okay, give him a round of applause. What's your name, Jen? Zion. Zion? What a name. Outstanding. I like that. That's Mr. Zion. Okay, give me one more and then we'll move on to the next question. One more. There's a young lady that wants to say something. She's just acting like she just is a little child. What is it? No? You sure? You had your No? Okay. All right. Okay. Brad, you want to fire? No? Okay. I'm just taking it all in. Okay. All right, so so here's the here's the, so I asked you the first one was what you liked about your neighborhood. Don't all jump out of your seats and answer this one as one. I want to hear from everybody. What don't you like? What is it you do not like about your neighborhood? Yes, ma'am. The way that people hang out around here and don't live here. Okay, the way outsiders come in and hang out. Okay, now that's interesting. So we're gonna get back to you in a second for that first day because you like the fact that the neighborhood was like this. She's saying people are coming and hanging out. So there's something that we, you see where we go with this? Okay, mm -hmm. so. I wasn't done. No, you won't, come on, give it to it me. It makes them feel like the residents are prisoners in their own home. Mm. We can't be where we wanna be. Okay, okay, so residents are feeling like they can't be comfortable at home because of the outsiders hanging out. I see you, champ. Let me get some folks that haven't spoken. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? My name is Diamond Taylor. I, I just like how they they say something to the residents that live here all day long, but they won't say nothing to the outsiders. Okay, they tell me who they is. Then define Security, that. Security. Okay. The residents, I mean the landlord people sometimes. Okay, the management company and security yeah. don't say something to the to people. The people that don't live down here, okay. but they always say something to us. Okay, okay. And how is that said to you? When you when you what makes you feel that way once when something is said to you versus the outsider? How is it they, said to they you? They tell us to get off the step, but it's times where I see people just sitting on the step doing whatever they're doing, but soon as I sit on the step, because I maybe I forget why I need to sit down with hot outside. And they'll come and tell me to get off the set. Okay. I live here. Okay. And you get a 30-day notice. Yeah, and then you get a 30-day notice. Okay. All right. So why don't you tell me, tell me, give me, what's your name? My name is Carolyn. Okay, so tell me what you're saying. Tell me. If we come outside, uh -huh. some people come outside just to look and see if they care about there. Okay. They tell me to get off the steps. Okay. Or you get a 30-day notice. Okay. 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 Just in that short window of time of waiting for a cab, you can be threatened with a 30-day notice. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am, what's your name? My name is Jerry. Okay. Jerry. Okay. I, I mean, I've been down here for a while. I was because of my cousin. Anyway, I don't like the fact how they took the um, playground. Tell me who they is. Who took the no, playground? The man. Oh, management. Okay. Took the playground, okay. the basketball court, okay. and everything else away from the kids. Okay. But then when the kids could kind of find something to do, they always own them. Okay. For, but what are you going to do? If it wasn't for Mr. Curtis, finding things for them to do, okay. the kids wouldn't have nothing to do. Okay. okay. <coughs> yes, sir. What's your name? Yeah, I'm I Jack, know yeah, yeah, Jack Avery, I'm a right here. I'm going to pick, pick it back on what she said okay. about the basketball court and the playground. The recent manager didn't do that. Okay. Right? The old manager did that. Okay. Took the course away. And me personally, you know, that basketball played a big part okay. in me growing up and okay. probably other kids sure. growing up. Okay. So we need that. Sure. You know, sure. I mean, I don't care if they say, you know, if the bottle's been thrown on the court and, okay. and trashed and everything, but we need that court. Okay. You know. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what, what we don't like right now is that activities for youth have been taken away yeah. by former management. Okay. 
So um, what else can we pour from that? Anybody else say anything different? I'm getting to you, John. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Treva. Um, I, I got something on both, the good and the bad. Okay. Um, as far as like the secret, What's the first one? Is this is um, good? First one you can say is good? It's, it's probably in the middle. Okay. I mean, the security has done a good job, but on some days I just feel as though they can interact more. As far as, you know, when things are going on and you got to yell to security, oh, they're fighting up there about 10 times before they get out of the vehicle mm -hmm. okay. and go attend to see what's going on. Okay. So security needs to be more tenant. Right. Okay. Um, can I get her name again, again too? <laughs> the parents with the children. Treble. Treble. Uh, your name again. It wasn't your name again. Go ahead. Um, as far as like the parents with their kids at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, it should not be a six or seven year old outside running around at night and those of us who are sitting out there yelling at your kids, telling your kids to get out of the street, go in the house, and then when you go to the parents, then it's always a bunch of negative coming from the parents. Okay. You got 144 units here and probably 25% of us or 35% of us probably work and the rest of them sit home all day long and you don't see not one parent coming out here throughout the day to check on their child. Okay. So let me just back up. So the bad is The parents need to get of, more involved in okay. my, my. Okay, parents need to get more involved with their young people and discipline their children? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I, I think it really is. You're under the age of I'm going to say maybe 18. I mean, I don't even really want to say 18. No. But if you're under the age of 12, it should be a curfew for them. Okay. It's times, I mean, one o'clock. Now, summertime, they out all night. Okay. All night long. And it's sad to say that it's going to take for somebody's child to get hit by a car before a parent step up. And when that parent step up, they're going to be, it's going to be so much negativity. But... It's not fair as residents sit outside, you constantly got to keep yelling. Watch out for the cars, don't cross the street, look before you cross the street. I just think if you're under 18, it need, they need a curfew. So before I record that the way I heard it, let me make sure we record it the way we did. So the, 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 the problem that we don't like is lack of communication between the parents and the young people. I don't, I wait a minute, hold on a second, just to make sure. I want to make sure that you're not asking for the management or the government to establish a curfew for your children when it's your responsibility to get them inside. Right, I would say more responsibility of the parents. Okay. Like they need to, they're their so, kids. So, okay, okay, I got you, okay, I got you. So parents need to get a better handle on uh, reining their kids in. Okay, give me, yes ma'am. Uh, I don't like how, you know how you were saying when um, you're asking for our name, we should feel proud. I don't like how I initially did not feel proud. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's such a, a shame and um, it's such a stigma around the neighborhood that makes you feel like you're less than when people, you tell people that you live in these type of communities, you are automatically put down. I feel like the residents are um, a lot of times it be a problem. Like a lot of times I have to go in my back bedroom to watch TV because I can't watch it in my living room because my neighbors can be in the hallway cursing at each other or going off or disrespecting each other or drunk. And that's not always people coming in the building. That's the people in the building not aware of their own actions. And I feel like sometimes the disrespect comes from within the building. Okay. So she feels like the disrespect and I guess the stigmatism around living here um, creates a negative. Yeah, like I've had two cars shot up here. I've had two, I've had people shot outside my door. I've had to deal with a lot of negativity that actually comes with the neighborhood. Okay. So I'm hearing two things from you, and let me address the first one. And I want everybody to hear me. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. I want everybody to hear when I say this, okay? This is the preacher's kid in me and motivational speaker coming out. I don't care where you live. I don't care where it's Woodside Gardens, Newtown 20, Bob, I don't care where it is. Your ability to have a sense of worth is about you. 
don't you ever allow someone else that doesn't live here to make you feel that they're better than you. That's right. Don't get that twisted. Amen. Okay? That's right. I don't care how much money they make or where they live. You have no idea how unhappy and twisted their life is. Well, 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 so I'm not going to, I don't want to get emotional about this, but let me tell you all something. As you all stand here and look at me, you see me, but you don't know the story behind what stands here. Okay? Young lady, as an African-American woman, don't you let anybody tell you any different than you can do what you want, be what you want, and at some point, this is a stepping stone for you, should you choose for it to be a stepping stone. Okay? Don't get wrapped around what other people think. They will drag you down a path that you don't need to go down, okay? Do that for yourself. Feel proud of where you are right now, okay? Because there's a bigger plan for you and you don't need to know what it is, okay? Just stay focused on what you need to do for you. Can you do that for me? All right, work on it. That's the best, that's, just, that's all I need from you. And everybody else needs to carry that message out of here today. Okay, I don't want any politician, any government form to make you feel any other way than you have the ability to do and be what you want to be. Young people, that was for you. Y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. All right, who else? What else we got? Yes, ma'am. I lived in both Newtown and Woodside, and I yes. must say that this is the first time that we ever had someone to come by and put neighborhoods as far as doing stuff for the kids. So Mr. Curtis has done a lot for the neighborhood and you know he don't separate the neighborhoods, he won't separate the kids. It's all you know, he involves Newtown and Woodside. And I've been here for uh, some time and both. And this is the first time that we ever had someone to involve both neighborhoods and have it as one. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How long it takes for stuff to get fixed around here? Okay. Okay, so we'll make a note of that. Management can do better with um, getting. What's your name? Kia. 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 Management can do better getting requests for maintenance, I guess, in order. Okay. Curtis, you can probably agree with that. Yeah, that's the nature of business. We'll, okay, let me take. You had your hand up, and I made you wait for a while. Speaking on what she said, management don't take the the request serious. Like my mom don't get her mail. Like okay. her, the mailbox don't have a door on it, so we don't be know where our mail is at. Oh wow! Okay. We haven't been receiving consistent mail for like the past six months. Okay. It's part of the renovation project. Okay. We in listen mode. We in listen mode. Today we in listen. We gotta take it on the chin, bro. We gotta take it on the chin today. Okay. All right. So here's 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 uh this third question. Can everybody hear me? Okay. This third question combines somewhat the first two together, okay? And if you need a second to close your eyes and visualize this, that's fine. Okay. I want you to describe to me the perfect neighborhood. It's not right. It's not right. Okay, just work with me here. Work with me. So when I say perfect, I'm talking about the neighborhood that you if you could had Monopoly money and, and you were playing Monopoly, okay, you could make it real. What does that neighborhood that you would like to live in look like? Describe it to me. You had your hand up first. I would say a bigger recreation center or boys and girls okay. club. Talk slow. Pam, you got that? Okay. I'm okay. Uh, what's your name? I got you. Oh, yeah, I got you. Okay. Bigger recreation center, Maybe more boys and, girls club. boys and girls club, more things for the youth in a nutshell. Okay, okay. Come on, let's listen to each other. Yes, ma'am. Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Yes. Looking for cleanliness. Cle cleanliness, organization, both inside and outside. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Okay. What is it? A pool. A swimming pool. Okay. I'm looking for somebody that has not spoken yet. I'll come and get you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Deborah. Deborah? Yes. Okay. I would like to see another rec because they just got one rec and that's in the back. A rec, recreation center? Yes. 
Okay, is that different than the Boys and Girls Club? No, no, no. It's all in one rec. Same thing. Okay, I got you. And that uh, place, housing, activities, and what have you. Yes, ma'am. What's your name again? Tamara. Tamara, okay. Safe. Safe? Okay. Safety. Yes, ma'am. Repeat your name for me. I'm terrible. Danielle. Danielle, okay. Something for the elderly people. Something for the elderly people. Programs for the elderly. Seniors. Because those programs could be for the seniors inside of that rec center, yeah. right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, I would like parking. Like, I know we got a parking oh. lot, but when I come home sometimes, I don't have a parking spot for my stuff like my building. Okay. More parking. Okay. More activities for the youth, of, like, like seven and under. Okay. So in that rec center, Pam, we just need stuff for the... Uh, Young people, the elderly, the seniors, um, parking, okay. Give me one more. Repeat your name for me again. Sherry. Sherry, okay. Yes. Um, I would say, like, well, I remember, like, back in the day. I don't know if they still have it in the Harbor House area uh -huh. or whatever, the rec center that they had. Uh -huh. And they had, like, parenting classes and all okay. that kind of stuff. Okay. Something similar to that. Okay. Parenting programs. Did you not say did you did you not know there was a parenting program? Well my kids are grown, so <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. All right, so there is already a parenting program. So let's put um, uh, better communication with management on programs that exist. All right, anybody else before I move on to the next one? We're about we need to get more it. tenants involved in things too. More tenant, more tenant involvement, more programs that involve tenant involvement. Okay, all right, here's the next one. I want everybody to process. Now it's, now it's time for us to kind of get really real here. Okay. All right, here's the next one. Why do you think violence in your neighborhood has elevated. Well, okay, go ahead, ma'am. The outsiders. Mm -hmm. That's okay. all. It's the outsiders. The outsiders coming in. Okay. That really, if you really was, I mean, like we all live down here, so we basically know everybody, know where everybody lives at. You know who comes visit who. It's mainly outsiders that come in, do your activities, and leave. Okay. I disagree because half of the outsiders come to the ones who live here. They allow them to come to their units and cause the problems both. and, the, and, the, and the, the violence and all that. If I invite someone to my house and I typically know that you're a troublemaker and you're, you do this, no, I'm not going to invite you to my house. But if I know I'm inviting you and you drink and you get un, out of hand, you're causing a problem. So. It, it's not just the outsiders, it's some of us inside of here that allow them to come here to do it. So okay. you cannot control everyone that comes inside the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? But some of us do invite some of these folks to our units, and some of us do associate with some of these folks, and that's where the problem comes from. Okay. So, so it's so not just the outsiders, it's the insiders as well. So it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we can be fair with that. Anybody else? There's Why a young man in the back there. Uh, in the green, that young man in the green. Yeah, yeah, the green. Below. Below. Okay, repeat your name for me, young man. Mackenzie, I'm sorry. Drugs? Okay. All right, anybody else? This is a serious problem. I expect to get more response from this one. Go ahead, man. Piggybacking off her, the people come in here every morning, like 8 o'clock in the morning when I'm putting my kids on the bus just to sell their drugs. Okay. And I mean, they outside Repeat before I get my Tierra Smith. Yeah, okay. I'm outside, they outside before I am. Okay. All right. Do you think a stronger police presence would help with that? Yes. yes. Do you not see a police presence in the morning? We do. Yeah, yeah, when they call they in and ride back out, and then, like I said, security right, don't so stand up to the outsiders. They always getting into the people that live down here. And it's like when after the uh, after the children get on the bus to go to school, is they're gone, and then they, they don't then they don't come back until the kids come out of school. So it's pretty predictable based on involvement. I heard involvement from the community. I heard involvement from you know the community at large that live here. You know what the cycle looks like. It's not that you don't know, right? I mean, you know when they're coming in. You know when they're leaving, and that's information. 
um, that has to be shared. It's, I mean, that's a, it's not a hard problem to solve that one there, but that's where the communications and line of communications have to be opened up better. So, go ahead. I think it's how um, the social media and some of the kids are being raised too. Like you go to the bus stop, you see the parents passing the kids out. Right. That's not the bus stop, you know what I mean? They smoke cigarettes while your kids going, you know what I mean? Like I don't think that the kids should have to walk through that just to get to the school bus. And then the kids are passing their staff and now they're treating each other negative. That comes from inside the house, that's early all early age, you know what I mean? That's not even hitting them to go to the drug stuff. That's just coming from out the house. So my next, hold on one second. So my next question was, I'm gonna just jump to it quickly, is how can we make these things better? <coughs> so I just heard stronger police presence. And well, sound like you missed. Just, just finish with a second. I, I, I think this is probably quite important, this, that the police are here until the kids get on the bus, and then they leave, and then they come back. Is that, is that what I'm hearing, and is that right? Mm -hmm. We've got this period of time when the police are not here, so they're here yeah. too late, or whenever the kids get on the bus and they leave. No, I think what she said is you have a police presence that comes in and right back up. That's, what she That's okay. pretty much no, 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 I'm, no. But it's, what I'm saying is, what I got from you is they'll ride through and ride back up. That's not a presence. That's a drive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. what's happening? Yeah. They ride yeah. in and they yeah. ride out. I just need to. I want to be sure I make the right yeah. notes. So we're talking about the riding in and riding out. Right? So, so this is still, okay, so this is going under why do we think violence has increased in your neighborhood? Yeah, down So, as far as like the drug dealers or whatever, I'm not going to call them drug dealers because not everyone sells drugs, but some of these guys that don't live here, that does come here, Half of them make sure half of these kids eat. Half of them make sure when they're outside running around that, you know, they give them a money to go to the ice cream truck. Mr. Arnold comes here. He's supposed to be for the community. He doesn't even let these kids get away with a nickel. nickel. So you got these older guys that, yeah, they're out here doing wrong, but all at the same time, it's a nice percentage of them that takes care of the community. I done seen plenty of times when they went and brought food for the kids. And they parents okay. not one came out to say, oh, well, where you get that from? Okay, just back up with me for a second because you kind of lost me. So the, we're not suggesting that the drug guys are supporting the kids. T tell me, I, I don't yeah, think that's I, what she's saying. She's saying right? basically, even yeah. though they out here doing what they do, it's kids that's out here and they, the kids could be outside all day. The parents never once come say, let's come in, it's time to eat. They go to the guys on the street, let me get a dollar, let me get two dollars, or they'll take a But as a community, we're not saying that it's okay. No, for I'm these not kids saying that. I'm just saying in okay. general, like some of the like the outsiders, like some more not all are bad. Okay. So okay, so we're talking about two different people. Right. We're talking about outsiders and then we're talking about outsiders that are drug dealers. Right. So the right. outsiders right. that are drug dealers. Let me put them on the shelf for a second, because we're not saying that it's okay for them to be giving our young people money. The people who are non-criminal activity folks are helping sometimes with the kids. Whoever this yeah. Mr. Arnold is, that's not what I'm saying. I just want to be clear what you're saying. <laughs> if, if what you're saying is the drug dealers are giving the kids money, I can't take that from you. It doesn't make it right. I'm not saying giving them money. Okay. I'm saying some of them do provide for the kids. Okay, which is what I thought I heard right, you say. Right. Okay, so let me be clear again. Soapbox time. Okay, I understand maybe what the logic may be that that's their way of helping the young people. That doesn't make it right. No, not at all. And young people, let me be clear to you: taking money from somebody that's selling drugs is something you don't do if you know that's what they're doing parents if you know that's what they're doing can we walk out of here today with one action item that that needs to stop today because it is, all it is is an enticement i'm gonna give you candy today lunch money today and in two weeks i'm gonna be giving you drugs to hold stop it okay so let me be clear on that before we even move on to the next question 
Yes, but with ma'am. that being said, parents need to pay yes. more attention to their kids. Yes. Okay. More and that goes to back kids. to what you were saying. Now, I know paradigm shifts, things have changed. It's hard to say something to somebody else's children. I get it. But through conversations like this, we've got to start working toward some solutions, okay? So this is healthy. So what you said, we got it. I heard, I, that's what I thought I heard you say. And it happens across the country. Right. But that is the methodology of a mindset of a street business mind. How to entice your workforce, right? right. So you I mean, can I'm, ultimately I'm get them on payroll. Like, not to put those guys down, but don't criticize and, and talk about what like you don't want them here. And when and you're not doing when something. When you're, you're not doing what you should be doing. You know okay. what I'm saying? I got you. I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Right. We clear on that one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. We have another question. Okay. I'm sorry. Who did I miss? Behind you. Can't see behind you. No. The, the last question that I had is the marijuana drug use. Is marijuana? Children. Wait a minute. Start your question. The here. drug use. Uh-huh. With marijuana. Yes. And the children. Yes. I see kids sometimes. They're 10 and 11 years old. They're smoking weed. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Out and about in the hallways or wherever. Let me let me tell y'all something real quick before we even move on. Since you're about to, everybody just listen to one at one at a time. So right now, as we're traveling about the county, we have a program called Not My Child, right? Where we're talking about the opioid addiction and the heroin and all that. We're in classrooms with fifth and sixth graders where they're saying they've been smoking weed for the last year, right? And the kids don't look like any of the kids that are in this room right now, okay? These are little white kids, okay, little black kids. It has no color. Marijuana and alcohol is simply gateway drugs mm -hmm. to get you to the hard stuff. Yeah, that's right. So young people, smoking marijuana is not okay. Okay? It's a lead-in to bigger things. So don't let anybody tell you any different. Every young person that hears me, look at me and shake your head, you understand. I see some heads not shaking. Every young person that hears me, shake your head, you hear me. Marijuana is not good. Okay? It simply leads to other things. A little girl just told me in the state's attorney and a group of us recently from the Crisis Response Center that she got some marijuana from her dealer and it was sparkly. It was sparkly because he laced it with some cocaine. Because in an effort to get her hooked on something stronger, he was leading her down the path of being addicted to something that she didn't process. This is seventh and eighth grade. Okay? So it's not okay for drug dealers to be giving your children money or giving them marijuana. It needs to stop today. So those community folks that are talking about how it used to be back in the day and some of the things you like about your community, you all have to come together somehow and have better communication as we try to develop a strategic plan to help work with you, okay? But it's got to start right here, right now. Can we agree on that? Yes. Yeah. Am I standing here by myself? Can we agree on yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. all right. Okay. What would make things better? That's the next question. What would make things better? We're almost getting there. You need a, it takes, you need a, the community. To everyone to be involved. Not like it's 144 units now. You don't see 144 head of household members here today. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's no excuse because okay, I my, I called you last night and I ain't want to get out of my bed, but I'm here. And we commend you for so that. So what was there? You know what I'm saying? It takes right. a community, not right. just ten of us or twelve. It's, it's more people that should sure. be here. Sure. Yeah, that's never, that never happened. Sure. So let me let me just because I don't want anybody to don't ever get caught up in numbers. Who's here today? This is a great start. Okay. So let's not take anything away from today. When we travel about the county with this opioid addiction thing, I stand in auditoriums that should be packed, but it's not. So the level of importancy doesn't usually hit folks until it touches you somehow. So everybody in this room, some kind of way, is touched by drug addiction. Everybody in this room somehow is touched with somebody that's cancer, somebody that's incarcerated within six degrees of you, okay? 
So don't beat anyone up or yourselves that we don't have three times the amount of people. This is a good start. We're very happy with what we see. Okay? Let's be clear on that. Because now it's going to take you all to go out in the community and say, girl, you missed something today. Next time you need to be there. And, and if, if they don't come, come that's okay. The same one's gonna be here. Yeah. But that's okay too. But that's okay too. So let me answer. Let me ask this question. Go ahead, Derek. Because I think you have a very valid point. If you get rid of the kids that are in here and it just leave the adults, and let's say you know we talked about part of a bigger strategy. What does the future look like? And it, say we wanted to have an adult meeting, just adults here, people that live here in this community. How many adults that are sitting here now could bring back two or three people with them? Do you have, and it goes, it goes to the relationships that you have built within your own communities. Because now we're almost speaking out of two sides of our mouth. We say we like the unity, we like the family that we have here. So now you got to use that to say how many of you can actually bring two or three people back with you. And let's show by a show of hands. How many, could, how many adults could actually bring two or three community people back with them? And, you, and look at the numbers. It's a, it's, a gr it's a great start. And you and you can try and you can't con right and you can't control that, but that's also a sad state of affairs when you live next to an adult neighbor and you can't get them to care enough about their community. Let's keep. I mean, let's keep this right. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. We have to keep the conversation real. I mean, a lot of good things have come out of this about what needs to take place, but you got to also feed into it yourself. You've got to also feed others around you to also be part of the solution. Because if you can't get adults in the room that live next to you to help solve community problems, I'll tell you, you're wasting your time. You are absolutely wasting your time because the government can't do it for you, the county can't do it for you. So I mean, that's one of the things that I would like to share with you to take away from this is the start. You know how we talked about giving you know, young people, you know, starting them out with we giving them money. It's the same thing here as adults. We gotta figure out how we can start. And for those who raised their hands, that's again, that's a great starting point if you can bring two or three people because they may miss a lot of it. But that's something that we really have to kind of drill down and look at who's gonna support making this community better. And I think the management should be here too. They yeah. never had no meetings. Security too. And, and, then, and, then, no meetings. and then the way the management belittle us. Yes. Like we were sitting there, I was yes. on the corner, we were talking to the security, and they like they used to call y'all cabs before they um, when they first came down here, all this stuff. And then um, my sister, she come to my house a lot. She watched my kids and stuff, so she out here as Father's Day. She telling the security Father's Happy Father's Day. One security walk right past her, so she go to him like you know I say Happy Father's Day. He like I don't have nothing to say to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say nothing to you. The you don't room. talk to me like that. I'm a grown woman. <laughs> and then I wasn't being rude, so why would I get that feedback from you? I said right. happy fall with that. <laughs> they real rude. Okay. Yeah, they real rude. They real rude. Okay. Okay. All right. Duly noted. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I got just a couple more questions. So um, the next one is, what would make, so we know where we are. Everybody knows where we are as a community right now today. What would actually make things worse? Knowing what you know right now. Could things get worse? Mm -hmm. I said no. I no? So, you, you so you're worse. saying we're at rock. Technically, in your eyes, things are... We're worse than the... I mean, you didn't have somebody, not even to bring it back up, but you didn't already have somebody close on the property up here. So if we can't get any worse than that, then okay. somebody getting killed on the property up here. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have people running... But we sitting out here with elderly people running behind us shooting. So, and I mean, security's nowhere we can, to be found. We can't get any worse than that. They so, nothing. They don't show up until them and after, after the fact. Right. Saying. Now, just let me make sure, because I know my memory is a little short, but just a little while ago, security was making This was before the new safe. security this is company. A new company. Okay, so I'm t that's what I said. Remember I said now, knowing where we are right now, could anything get worse? And if so, how would it get worse? What would make things worse? Yes, sir. I would say it would get worse if the kids in these rooms go out, you know what I mean, doing with those kids that... Okay. You so know. if we lose the the, the, the positive would, movement yeah. of the current young people, mm -hmm. that would be bad. That would be catastrophic, man. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, what else? Losing security around the um, property. Losing the current security or losing security? Period. 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 Okay. 
because we've established that security can be better. Okay. With a better attitude. Yeah. With a better attitude. Well, better, better is just huge. Better, better dress, better spoken. I got, I got what better is. Okay. Yes, sir. Women. I said I don't think it could get any worse. If you ask me, like the last four, four or five years, it's been getting better. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. So I won't belittle this one. Anyone else? Okay. So that's a good. That's a good starting point. Okay. All right. Here's the next one, and then we'll have one more. How can people who live here? How can you all that live here? make the neighborhood safe. You, you say you can't? You can't. Tell me because why you can't. Because if I, if I go to management and tell you that I have a problem within the building or the neighborhood and I bring it to your attention and okay I'll take care of it. It's, and even the other residents as far as like cleaning this like it's one in every building. That one what? One resident in every building that I feel as though should help keep, keep your building clean, mm -hmm. keep surrounding the building, the parking lot, or anything. So I feel as though if you don't work, okay, hold community me. service. Let me just jump, jump in real quick. My question is, how can the neighborhood, you all here, make the neighborhood safer? I'm not talking about clean. We've all worked together. Work together. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so that's, that's one answer. Community needs to work together. Okay. I heard about the young people hanging out after hours and what have you. Can we not get a handle on that? Go ahead. I'm going to say you know, one thing you know, the community can do, I mean, not only to do, but we got to, strength comes in, you know, in numbers. So mm -hmm. all of us that lives in this community who are hanging out, you know, not saying they're doing bad, just hanging out, you got to go up to them and say, look, we're not going to have this in this community. You know, six, seven, you know, Grown up, go up to them, you know, in numbers. So describe to me what that looks like. Tell me, tell me what you see when you're saying that. Is that me, you, Curtis, that live here, walking up to whoever, you know, kids, grown okay. up, selling, you know, drugs okay. or whatever. You and know, then, what, then what if they, what if they dangerous and they shoot us? We're walking up to them. Mm -hmm. No, this is the way you got to go up to them. You know, you don't go, hey, you can't do this without, you know, your tone of voice. Yeah, but sometimes you walk so, so so listen to the and they and it's like you can't tell okay. me. Don't don't don't, don't take it too deep. Don't take it too deep, okay? I heard what he said. Okay, and let me just kind of tell you what I saw based off of what he said. When I came down here the other day, when I pulled up and Curtis came out of the building, before Curtis got from me to that camera, I know for a fact at least eight kids. Eight, at least eight either hugged him or told him, Mr. Curtis, it's my birthday, or Mr. Curtis, thank you for the book, or Mr. Curtis, don't forget, but he engaged at least eight kids. They just, he was like a big magnet, <laughs> okay? My point is that I believe what you're saying is that three, four, five, six, 20 more guys duplicated what I saw the other day that live here is what you're saying. You're not suggesting that you're going up to somebody that the police should approach, because you know who they are. Don't you? Yeah. Okay. What he's saying is trying to duplicate what I know I saw getting out of the vehicle the other day. Okay. So as a community, continue to tell me what you can do as a community to make it safer. Come on, anybody. Yes, ma'am. I believe people shouldn't be so... Um People shouldn't be so sensitive, like about their kids. Like I seen a child hanging upside down. I was like, you need to stop doing that. I shouldn't get yelled at. Like, don't say nothing to my child. Mm -hmm. You ain't, you ain't their mother. You know what I mean? I so, so we need to get back to the it takes a village kind of mentality. Nobody's saying touch my child, but it's it's okay to talk about. I know when my grandmother was living in Harbor House. It wasn't oh, anything God. for another parent to correct you. Oh, yeah. And you didn't have to tell your grandma. Yeah. 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 How many, think back on what Derek said, if you had to identify five, listen, ten, listen, five or ten 
Mr. Curtis, mentors that are here. Could you do that? Are no. there? No. 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 One at a time. You're saying yes. So. No. You, you can name five, five or ten Mr. Curtis's? No. Can you? Let's ask the young people. Are there any more Mr. Curtis's in this neighborhood? People that you're comfortable going up to to hug, ask for a book, take you somewhere that you trust, that you look up to? Yes, sir. Tell me. How about somebody other than him? No? Well, wait a minute, y'all. I can't hear him. Yes. Hold on a second, y'all. Hold on a second. Please, please. Your family? So you have an uncle or somebody that? Okay, okay. So here's one. Yes, ma'am. The guy that just spoke. Jack. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. It might not be five, but it's a couple. So, Jack, you've been identified. <laughs> okay. You've been identified. So, Curtis Jr., okay, effective today. Okay. We've talked. Okay. Jack and I have talked several okay. times about some things that we want to do together. Okay, so y'all have talked. Yes. But today, we can walk out with an action starting today. Starting today. Okay? Today. You guys, okay? You got it. Absolutely. That's one. Great question, Brad. Yes, ma'am. Miss Ecky. Miss Ecky? Who's Miss Ecky? That's his wife. So a Miss Curtis. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Because women, right? Women are, the, women are the backbone. A lot of things can happen in this community if the women band together. I won't get on a soapbox with that one. Okay? All right. Great. All right. All right. So here's the last one. Go ahead. So are, are we finished with that? There are 140. I keep hearing that number, 144 units. And we identified two men. Is that really it? Mr. That's my question. Is that Besides it? Mr. Curtis, Mr. Jake is the only man since I've been down here. I'm already clear on now. that. He's the only man that you ever see involved. Involved, yeah. He's the only man out of 144 units. He's the only man that you ever see involved. And, and the reason that I asked that question is important because we put labels and we put titles. A lot of times, especially for youth, we talk about a mentor, a mentoring program. That's the first step in safety for our young people. They have to feel safe, they have to feel secure. So as you well know, you said 140 units and we have two men that have been identified and, young, and one woman that has been identified, but that's at least a start. So that's one thing that we can at least target to say, what does a mentorship program that comes from within the community? Who are those individuals? Are there programs to look to identify and help strengthen what that looks like from the community? So it is pretty sad to say out of 140, but at least it's a start. And I think that's something that we should you know, kind of pay attention to. And I apologize. <coughs> Big Brother Larry, step about three steps forward. Let them see you, baby boy. Curtis, here's another one. I invited him. Here. I okay. <laughs> here's another one. It's another male. It's another male in the community. His name is okay. Deontay. Ward. 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 So now, when I asked y'all, was that it? Well, Why you got to pick me. That's a good start. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we got what? Three males. Three males. Four. Four. Four, four. four and a female. Okay. So I'm gonna make a commitment before we're done, man. I'm going to meet with the four of them this week. Me personally. We lift up the test tag. Okay. We work with you. Okay. All right. So we'll get to that. I already jumped ahead. Okay. All right. So is that it on that one? I've got the four four. Okay. So now here's the last question. How can we? Now we is this consortium, this group of government entities that are coming together for this big strategic project. That's the we. Right? How can we, in your eyes, help you make this community better? How can we work with you? We need to work with Mr. Curtis and get Mr. Curtis a vehicle so he can have both get for the kids. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I know we're no, we're not actually giving solutions, but I know clergy's here, right? Yeah. So you said van. We got several churches in this community right here that have vans. That's have you reached out to any of them? All, all week I'm in communication. Okay. Um, okay. I'm glad. I, I'm glad this forum has been set up so that I can uh, okay. develop. Okay. All right. I'll stand. All right. What else? What else? Okay. She's saying she wants to talk. Okay. All right. What else can we do? This is your opportunity. Don't ask me for helicopters and boats. <laughs> and all that. Okay. But what? What can we do? Have job fairs. They have job fairs. Okay. They all who go. No they, have, they have job fairs several times. They put notes on the building. Okay, every summer. Go. Every summer, I know. Oh. So we just got to do better communication. It's okay. You didn't know. Derek, okay. may, I, may I make my plug now? Yes. Uh, I have summer jobs for young people and adults. Ooh, Lots of them. Yeah, yeah, so, so she over there. Stand up. Stand up. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I, there are job opportunities. I have, I would say, well over 100 jobs. Uh, I had probably over 300 when I started. So please, see me afterwards. I need your email, and then I will send you the list of jobs. All of them require online applications. So Mr. Curtis, hopefully there's computers so that they will have access to apply. Jobs are available. I get new jobs every day, so please, please, please reach out to me so that um, you know you have the opportunity. In August, we're going to be bringing a job fair and a health <coughs> fair to the community. We're in the process of planning some other things. but uh, And I see all the woman pinned up Charles with her hand up. Yeah, we had two job fairs last year, June and October, and I personally brought flyers down here myself and gave them out and put them in the office. Mr. Curtis wasn't here during that time. He hadn't arrived as yet. But we had two job fairs, two adult job fairs down at Pitt Moyer. Yeah. The other thing we're going to have is one thing that I want to tell you about. Uh, Anne Arundel Workforce Development Corporation is an entity within the county. The, the leaders in that organization didn't think that Annapolis needed jobs. They see boats and sailboats and all that. Well, when we had the two job fairs and they realized people in Annapolis do need jobs, we had also a hiring event back in December from Maryland Live. And of course, transportation is an issue. But what happened was what came out of all this, and around the workforce development, we had a meeting with them this week. The city manager will be opening an office in Annapolis. That is huge. In Stanton Center. So they're coming, they're going to be hiring somebody, they should be open when school starts. So they're going to have a person in there and added to that, they're going to have a youth component. And what that's going to look like, if you go to Annapolis High School, if you're going to college, you're set. If you get into the, the competitive program called Cat South, you're set. But the kids who don't get in those programs, when they graduate, really have nowhere to go. They're going to be working with the youth at Annapolis High School, those ones that are in the middle. That's going to start. The city is pumping in some money for this. We're also going to be resurrecting the Community Ambassadors Program. I got a meeting this week, the city manager and I, with the superintendent of schools. We're going to have a meeting this week to talk about the Community Ambassadors Program. That's a program, and I always use Miss Betty Ann. Grew up in Robinwood, she recently passed, knew everybody. She was at Annapolis High, checked with little Timmy in Robinwood. He's not in school, go down to his house, pick him up, bring him to school, walk the hallways, go in the cafeteria, and do all kinds of things. Looking out on the weekends, we're going to reinstitute those programs. Miss Daphne's down here, Miss Tippy's over East Port Terrace Harbor House. We're going to get four new ones to cover the rest of the communities in Annapolis. The, the city is kicking in some money for that as well. So there are a lot of things going on. The other thing is, we're going to be doing the Strengthening Families program. I'm based at Harmon Elementary. The Strengthening Families program is a health department program. It's a 14-week program. It's free. What happens is you come, uh, your family gets to eat a meal. They, you break out in the sessions. There are all kinds of sessions to talk about different kinds of things. There's a graduation at the end. It is for basically Newtown 20 students because they were going to Georgetown East at a certain point. 
Because they are now going to be going to Walter S. Mills parole, I had a meeting yesterday, day before, at parole with about eight people from the school system and the health department. The program's still going to be at Georgetown East. They pick you up on a bus and take you to the program for 14 weeks. That program is going to be for 14 weeks at Georgetown East, then 14 weeks at parole in the spring. So one's going to be in the fall, one's going to be in the spring. Added to that program is going to be a mental health component. Uh, we're working on that as well. So there are a lot of things that are going on. We're working extremely hard to get our communities on a good track. And a lot of the things that, that Mr. Derrick has talked about today are going to be addressed. But it's a, it's, a, it's a hard thing. But also we're working on the Street Corner Ministries Coalition. They're going to be coming into your community. We're asking each church to adopt a community. We're having meetings. We've been doing this for about a year or so. So that's getting off the ground as well. So a lot of things are happening. A lot of things are going on. And I'm glad I'm here today to hear what your concerns are. But feel free to, to contact me or all the women Phil Lacey to learn more about what's going on. Thank you all very much. We look for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. And to add one more piece, I think we can do something with transportation. Absolutely. Okay. To provide okay. tokens so that you can get to the Stanton Center right. to, for the job exactly. opportunity. Exactly. The other thing is we're working on it, but it's going to be kind of hard to do, but we're going to do it probably next year. We're going to have an ex-offender job fair hiring event. But we've got to prepare the gentlemen and the ladies for that first. We have to get the businesses on board. We have to get records expunged. I was a prosecutor in Baltimore City for 20 years, but I've lived in Annapolis for 63. I've been here in parole all my life. But we're gonna we're gonna try to get some records expunged. They have a expungement specialist that looks at your record, some things they can come off because I know that's a barrier for some folks. So we're working on that. So a lot of different things are going on, and I want to mention Miss Yavola. Her church uh, has been doing the street corner ministries, and Miss Miss uh, Karen over here as far as uh, St. Philip's Episcopal Church. So thank you, ladies. Uh, for your church participation too. They've been very strategic in what we're doing. Thank you very much. All right, close. Let me that tell you a lot. So let me let me just make my closing statement. Um, first of all, Curtis, do you have anything to say? Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and what what PK management and what we're trying to do, for, especially for the youth, because I heard a lot of feedback about what we're doing about what we have established with the youth. There could be better communication that's getting our programs, a lot of what we're trying to do here advertised. Um, as far as recreating the kids, um, as, as, as a lot of you already know, a lot of our, our kids are going to camp uh, beginning Monday. Um, we're in the process of building a playground that's on order. Um, we're in the process of reconstructing the basketball court so the kids can, can have more activities. I heard a lot of you talk about how uh, more um, volunteerism, we, can, we, we don't have enough of that here. Um, I implore a lot of you to get involved in just monitoring the kids while they're on the properties. There's equipment in, in my office. Some of you um, can come take the equipment out. I have one person in this room who takes the kids out and play kickball with them. I mean, just the fact that an adult is, is on the playground with them, engaging them in something to do. I can't be everywhere at all the time. And uh, like you witnessed, sometimes I have other things going on. I have to just drop what I'm doing just to go play catch with somebody because they want to talk. The kids here in this room have a voice. We didn't hear from all of them, but I'll hear from them later before I hit my car. Um, there's things that they want to say that they didn't get out. So they're, they're, uh, our resources are in this room. Um, so will you capture that and yeah. send that to us? So Absolutely. We can add it? Okay. Yeah, if anybody feels like you didn't say something you want to say, you can always tell Mr. Curtis, and Mr. Curtis will always tell me. We're all talking together now. Right. A couple more closing words from up front here. Mr. Simmons, how's everybody doing? I'm Deputy Fire Chief Kevin Simmons from the Fire Annapolis Fire Department. And um, a lot of times I hear folks talk about the fire station. I never called the fire station, I called the firehouse. Because I want my firefighters and my officers to feel like they're part of the community. So a house seems like part of the community more so than a station. And we just hired a bunch of folks recently. And what I wanted to do when I went through this hiring process is I wanted to get as many people from the community as I could, as opposed to going to Baltimore City, Baltimore County, um, 
and all the outskirts, I wanted to, to hire as many folks, as many local folks as I could. So I worked with uh, all the women, Rhonda Pendell Charles and all the women, Sheila Finn Layson, and we actually gave um, recruiting uh, events in this ward, Ward 4, where you are. So we can make sure we have opportunities for a lot of young people. I want to reiterate what Mr. Matthews said. He kind of said, stay away from drugs. He said, stay away from marijuana. Marijuana seems harmless, but young people, if you're trying to get a job in the fire department, if you're trying to get a job in the police department, if you're using, then you eliminate that possibility. You eliminate it. Now, just think about it. In the fire department, you're on the ambulance. On the ambulance, we carry drugs to actually use on people who are sick, who are overdosing, to bring them back out of it. So if you're a drug user, you know, we can't depend on you to do your job because you may be using the drugs that's in our ambulance, right? So as long as I'm in the city of Annapolis, what I'm going to plan to do is make these opportunities available to people in this area. I've been in this business for 35 years, but one thing escaped me. I have never worked in a jurisdiction where I live, and I always wanted to do that. I served many, many years in Howard County, but I was living in Baltimore County. I served Annapolis for the past seven years, but I don't live in Annapolis. So I know how important it is to serve the community that you live in, and I want to make that opportunity to young people. Well, well, one second. So let me just thank all of you for being here. Thank Mr. Curtis. He's the first person from any management company that has turned up to one of my meetings, been incredibly helpful, and just is so much part of the community. So thank you, Mr. Curtis. Thank you all my this is only the beginning of many conversations. I know Derek and Brett are going to follow up with some of you, and we will be back. And when we're back, I hope you do reach out to your neighbours and say, we can fix it when we're all together. I want to thank Derek for being here and facilitating. He did a lovely job. And thank Brett too. And, and for those of you who don't know Brett, he's an extremely successful businessman right here in the city of Annapolis. And he's given up his busy Saturday to be with us. So thanks, Brett, for being here. That's just wonderful. And thank, thank you. This is how it starts. And never think that a small group of people can't make a difference. That's the only thing that ever does.